hospital. But first, let's go to Iskander Razak, who is at the scene. And Iskander, police have spoken this morning. What more do we know about this man? Good morning. Well, police have said that this is a horrific attack, uh, but it is an, a deliberate attack. However, at this stage, not directly related to terrorism. A 32-year-old man is in police custody in hospital being treated for minor injuries, no serious injuries, and police have been able to have not a formal interview yet. They're hoping to do a formal interview later today, perhaps this afternoon, but they've had to, they've been able to speak to him a little bit. He is a man that they say is known to police, is known to have mental health issues and drug issues. Here's a little bit of what police have had to say about this man and why this is becoming such a difficult case to pinpoint as to the cause and the actions and the, the motivations behind it. During those discussions, uh, he made some utterances uh, there is, a, in respect to a number of matters, he spoke of dreams and voices, but also attributed um, some of his activities as well to the, due to the, uh, the mistreatment of Muslims. We haven't identified any extremist links with this man. We haven't identified him linked to any groups. We haven't identified anyone inciting him to do any actions or any prior uh, extremist activities prior to those utterances last night. So, Iskander, I believe police now are yet to formally interview this man, but what have witnesses been saying? Witnesses this morning uh, are everywhere. This is a busy area, a lot of little shops here that were direct witnesses to what happened. They're all here again today. Those witnesses say they're still shocked and confused. I spoke to one person who, who, who saw it all happen and said he had trouble sleeping last night. Uh, other people who are here who have known about it uh, weren't directly involved but come here often. This is such a busy area, uh, very much confused about the situation but are continuing to go about their daily business in somewhat a, a little bit of defiance, any kind of fear or any problems that may be happening at a broader level. They're, they're here to show that they, they can continue doing their day-to-day -day business. Uh, other people have just arrived here with very little information, having heard about what happened this morning and are still in a sh state of confusion and shock. There are a lot of police officers here as well and police counsellors for people. Uh, and one person uh, who owns, oh, sorry, operates a donut shop, saw it all happen. Here's what he had to say about what happened yesterday. Behind me I saw this van, um, I don't know, it must have been going 80, 90 miles an hour. You know, it was really fast and then just hitting people, people crossing the road, starting to run. You're just shocked. You're just frozen, frozen in time. Frozen in time and, and watching a theatre. And that was Socrates. He actually said he has real trouble sleeping. And what he's seen, he can never unsee. His staff are very traumatised by what's happened. But uh, And he also says that there's an air of sadness right now. He remembers this time last year, people were walking around in Christmas hats with that air of joy. That's not here right now, at least for him and the people he knows so closely around this area. Now, Scander, it seems that it's business as usual now back at the scene. Uh, can you describe what it's like this morning and where police are at? with the physical investigation? Well, all of the roads are now open. They were closed. It was a large scene of investigation up till about uh, 2 a.m. this morning. All of the roads here are open. This is such a busy area. Trams are coming down to where we are standing. The train's right behind us. Uh, tourists going about their, their usual uh, shopping right now. Uh, but there are police officers on every street corner three or four in high vis and police counsellors uh, uh, here to offer support for anyone who may be traumatised and of, of course get any information that they can of police actually have a Facebook page set up uh, if anyone has any vision or any information uh, they can go to that Facebook site and upload any information that they, they have to try and help with this investigation. Police uh, aren't increasing their alert level, they're saying the alert level remains the same but police have previously said that they were always going to increase their numbers uh, visibly and uh, behind the scenes as well over this Christmas period, not just because of this incident, but because this is uh, Boxing Day, test is coming up because of so many people being out and about for this festive season. Iskander Razak, live there from Flinders Street in Melbourne. Thank you.
Let's go now to Elias Kluwer, who is at the Alfred Hospital. Good morning to you, Elias. Can you tell us what you know about the condition of those in hospital? Well, the acting Chief Commissioner, Shane Patton, just updated us on News Breakfast uh, a short time ago, and he informed us that 12 people are still in hospital, still being treated for injuries. One of them, uh, an eight, a man in his 80s, is being uh, treated for critical injuries. He's fighting for his life this morning. When we arrived at the Alfred Hospital here in Melbourne's inner city this morning, we were under the impression that 19 people were being treated for injuries and four were in a critical condition. Um, fortunately, though, it seems as if some people have been discharged and that uh, people's conditions have been dis downgraded from critical, which is a fantastic result. We also know of the four-year-old boy who was being treated at the Royal Children's Hospital. Uh, we believe, according to the Acting Chief Commissioner, that he's no longer in a critical condition or is not in a critical condition and uh, his condition has in fact improved, which is fantastic news. But the real story, I guess here, Catherine, and Iskander mentioned some of the eyewitness accounts. Some of the people we've spoken to just described the amazing uh, rapid response from the emergency services who arrived on the scene so quickly after the incident and transported and delivered the injured people to hospitals all across Melbourne so quickly so they could be treated. The hope is now that that incident won't result in uh, any fatalities. Yes, yeah, some good news out of that indeed, uh, Elias. Can we expect updates throughout the day on the conditions of those remaining in hospital? Well, we've spoken to all the hospitals involved here and they've informed us that the medical staff and doctors will be assessing the injured people today throughout the morning. They, of course, assessed them and monitored them overnight and uh, it seems as if they felt as if people were uh, healthy enough to return home. But we can expect more updates throughout the day and hopefully more people can return home and the condition of the people with still in hospital can improve. Elias Kluwer from outside the Alfred, thank you.